Hi folks, welcome to another Third World Garage video. This one is going to be kind of interesting. I don't think anybody else has gone this far into this transmission on on YouTube. And it is the transmission for a 2005-2006 first gen facelifted Mini Cooper with the non-supercharged engine and the 5 speed Getrag transmission. Now this was the replacement for the Midlands transmission, which had just some disastrous engineering. They press fit the ring gear to the differential. That's not a good idea at all. As you can see, the get drag, it's bolted. Um, now, the thing I'm going to show you on this that nobody else has have seen has done. First off, what the hell are these little things? Well, they have these balls in the end and they help with the shift selection. I don't think you have to remove those. I'm not going to take this too far apart either, and I'll show you why. At the bottom of the shaft, of the both, both shafts is a two shaft transmission, you have sealed bearings. In fact, here's the replacement. It's a NSK bearing number TM205. Um, and it's the exact same bearing number as you have right here. So the replacement bearing in the $109 kit from eBay, from I think it's called like the Gearbox Shop or something. It, it, it comes with all that. It comes with original mini seals and everything. Actually turned out to be a decent kit. But they're perfectly fine. Now I put my finger on the bearing and then turned the shaft. Did that for both of them. I could feel no grind in the bearings. These are not easy bearings to change. They're actually very difficult. They have snap rings on each one and this one in particular has this oil slinger which I punched through with a screwdriver when I was trying to get the seals off. Fortunately the kit does come with new seals but here are here are the destroyed seals that go over hit this. Very careful not to ruin the machine surface when you try to do that. Um, but basically that's fine. Now what did fail in this transmission is right here this oil seal failed but also the differential bearings. Now this one doesn't look too bad. You flip it over and you look at the other one and we'll roll it around. Once it focuses, there we go. And we should see right there, completely destroyed bearings. And those will have to be repaired. Now, remember doing a transmission if you've never done one before, they're, they're all kind of unique. Set this up. And they're not easy. It, it's easier to rebuild an engine than a transmission because they're all kind of unique, special, special little flowers. They all want a little bit different something. Um, for example, how do you remove this bearing race that was in here? Well, I use. A mixture of these two tools seal puller and this little hook screwdriver which I used to add an additional fulcrum as I was pulling it and I had to just sit here and leverage 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 and it took me about five minutes to get the bearing race out now the other things we're going to look at on this transmission we're going to see that I'm just going to give a physical inspection around this this bearing race and it's fine but this one has a little flaw on it I don't know if you can see that but right there so what I'll do with that is I'll actually take a little grinding stone on a Dremel and I'll just smooth out the edges so it doesn't catch on the new bearing but this was making some bearing noise I can tell it's not those bottom bearings which are really hard to take out and also, when you take this transmission apart, you want it in this orientation, which would be bell housing up. It's designed to come apart this way. That's how all the bolts are. You don't even have to remove the bolts. As you can see here, they're all still happily in their respective, ha respective places. And I apologize about the bad lighting in here, but it's just one of those Ryobi lights that uh, you've probably seen on Mighty Car Mods and other places because everybody loves that light but um, 
Yeah, but this is basically how it works. It's a really compact transmission. This piece here, which is your shift selector, this comes out by removing three Allen heads. And then you have to sit there and kind of finagle it out, shift it around a little bit. Goes into this assembly here. These are two 13 millimeter bolts. The other fastener you need to have, you need to have an E8 socket. I believe that there's also uh, that a Torx T40 to take the shift selector out. And a E12 socket, which is for your case bolts. And that's your basic set of tools that you need to take this transmission apart to this, other than the hammer and the snap ring pliers. And as you can see, I do a lot of transmissions back here. Well, not a lot, about a few a year, but so I keep all my snap ring pliers here. And I love these from Harbor Freight. They're reversible. There are only one specific type per snap ring. They're not the stupid little things where you have to put the parts together and everything and you always lose the parts. Oh, and here's another thing that fails on these transmissions I found out. This is, let me get it back in the light, reverse gear. Or the reverse gear idler. As you can see, there's a bushing inside. Well, that bushing wears out over time and it starts making some knocking noises. If I can get a new one from Mini or wherever, hoping Mini doesn't want like $200, it is a BMW company, uh, I'll replace it before I put this gearbox together. Otherwise, it's probably okay for now. This transmission's only got 83,000 miles on. It came out of my, my blue Mini Cooper that you may have seen in other videos, but then again, nobody's watched those videos, so nobody obviously cares. But uh, if you want, you can watch the other video. That's up with that car. And it is kind of a series of things that I'm doing with this. There we go. But there's our very obvious, even on a cell phone video, with an old cell phone bearing damage. You leave that in the car, and it's going to cause a catastrophic gearbox failure. If that bearing fails, the ring gear or crown wheel, if you want to call it that, if you're in the UK or um, British English speaking places, but I'm in the US. That will cr crash into the pinion and it'll shear off teeth from the pinion and from the crown wheel or ring gear. So you defi definitely want to take care of this problem when you find it. That probably would last about, I'd give it about 10,000 more miles with it being like that because the rest of the bearings are fine, but it had already started to damage the rates. And also, the other bearing is a little bit scored, so that'll get replaced. The input shaft bearing will get replaced, and the lay shaft bearing on the case on the outside case side will also get replaced, as well as the races and seals. And that's basically the kind of rebuild that I'm doing to this transmission. Now, I hope you enjoyed this this look into the R50 Mini Cooper's five-speed transmission. This is again the non-supercharged model. If you have a supercharged model, it's a different transmission. It's a six-speed manual. And if you have a 2002 to 2004 Mini Cooper, up to, I think, seven of 2004, I'm not positive, you have what's called the Midlands transmission. And may God have mercy on your soul, because that transmission sure won't. Anyways, this has been another exciting video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. And hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.